Hey all my JavaScript friends, this is the Virtuoid aka Mike Smith and this is our video on test driven development for the player class in our Devonport card game. If you like this video, please click on the like button below, subscribe to our channel or leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Alrighty, now let's take a look at the test for the player class. As you know, we had to create a very basic player class to be able to get our round test working correctly. The rounds were the really big thing with the Davenport game. So now let's concentrate on the test for the players. And there's not a whole lot here. What you're seeing on the screen right now is the player class that we created for the uh, round test. And so now we're going to need to be able to do the test for the player itself. Now, as you can see with the arguments here, we just really have two arguments you have to take a look at. Uh, either to do an ID, which has a default of a random ID, and it has a human property, which is false by default, which means that was going to be AI controlled. And of course, then we got the uh, make sure that we're going to be able to have read only variables here for ID, human, deck, and lock card, and be able to specify whether we get the locked card correctly. Uh, now, this is the part that's going to change a whole lot within this test because one of the things we're going to need to expand upon on the lock card here is that with the round, we just basically say, hey, if it's human, we're just going to do a timeout. Well, now we're going to have to build the timeout within the player. So we're going to run the test to be able to build the timeout within the lock card. So the lock card one's going to be giant size. I can guarantee you that. So let's just take this one step at a time and let's first go ahead and create our javascript file for the constructor and that's going to be very very easy and here is the code and that's all it is we just want to chase, make sure that when we say a new player it does create an instance of player i mean it should automatically but hey we're going to test for that anyway so that would be the construct so that would be everything we need to do for the constructor of the player i mean there's, there's really nothing else so We've got those two properties, ID and human. So let's go ahead and let's create the specifications for those two. That would be the ID spec. This is very simple. We're just gonna basically uh, create, we make sure we do create the ID property. We make sure it returns the correct ID if we pass it in as an argument. And also we should not be able to change the ID property. So what are we doing here? We're going to make sure it is equal to a type of string because we will default the ID of the player ID. We will default the ID as a string. So therefore we want to make sure it comes back to us as a string. If we happen to pass it in as an argument, we want to make sure that we do get the value back and we want to make sure we're not able to actually change the value itself. The next thing is going to be the human specification and it's going to run pretty much the exact same way as the ID did. Let's take a quick look at that. So here's the code. We should be able to create the human property, of course. It creates it, we make sure that it's going to be a type of Boolean. Uh, we should be able to make sure that the default is going to be false. So we want to default, whenever we create a player, it's going to default to be an AI player. If we do happen to pass in the argument, we will make sure that we, uh, we get that argument. And if uh, we should not be able to change the human property, if it's changeable, you know, we shouldn't be able to change it at all. So that takes care of the two properties. Now, what are some of the things that are going to happen within the player itself? Well, one of the things is, is that we're going to need to create a deck. And when we, we're not going to tell the, we're not going to be able to pass a new deck to the player. We're actually going to create a completely blank deck within the player itself. And then the outside application will be responsible for populating that deck as it sees fit. So this is basically going to run into the idea here is that we want to make sure that we do create a deck property, that it's empty, and that it is read only. So let's go ahead and create that deck JavaScript file or deck specification, I guess is, would be the correct thing to say there. And let's throw in some code. And there is the code, real simple. We should be able to create the deck property and when we create the deck property, we should be able to access it and it should be an instance of deck. We should be able to ensure that it is empty and to do that, the deck, which is using our virtual void deck, let's just go back to player. Notice here that we're using the, uh, my NPM repository called virtualoid and that's the deck property. Uh, so we're going to use the card count property off a of deck to be able to get the value of zero. And we should not be able to change the deck property, which is again, what we standard do, we, we standard we standard here is that we try to change it and we do it expect true is equal to false to force an assertion error in that case. Otherwise we check and make sure it is a type error because if it's not a type error, then something else has gone wrong and Lord knows what kind of problems we could end up having. Okay, 
Now comes the fun thing, because here's the key. This lot card was something that was thrown together very quickly within the round to be able to, you know, basically assumed everybody was an AI. And if it wasn't, an, if it was a human, we need to be able to just basically do a timeout. So what we now need to actually test for when we do the lock card is we need to test to make sure that the timeout actually occurs if the value doesn't actually change. And that's gonna be some really fancy, fancy schmancy code. So let's create our locked card specification. And then let's throw some code inside here. And here's our code. So let's go through step by step what these, this code actually does. Now, the player code itself, we are noticing that it returns a particular promise. It returns a promise resolve. Uh, so we won't have to be able to do promises within the lock card. So first we're gonna take a look at, we should be able to lock the card. So basically this is what, we do, what we're doing here is that Cypress doesn't actually work with promises very well straight out of the box. What you have to do is you need to wrap that promise within a Cypress promise. Now on the other hand, a Cypress promise doesn't have any kind of catch available to it. It just does a bunch of thens. So you kind of, kind of, kind of go through a couple of little weird things here to be able to get uh, this, uh, to get everything working correctly here. First thing we want to do here is we're going to wrap the, we're going to wrap an object within Cypress and this returns a Cypress object. And this Cypress object then will have, it automatically have promises associated with it. So then we just do another, a then function on that. Once we do the then function within the then is where we're going to return a promise. And within our promise here is where we're going to actually go get that particular card and then figure out whether we have a timeout error, which throws an exception. Because remember over here, player, when we get a timeout, it throws, an, it throws a rejection. When it throws a rejection, we're going to catch that rejection and resolve the error name. Otherwise, we're going to resolve a true or false whether this lock card is the actual, it is indeed the actual card. So once it gets out of this, then it's going to have one of two values. It's either going to have a true or it's going to have some sort of string in it, which represents an error. So all I'm testing for here is to expect result to be true. This part up here, actually, I think is, is an error. Um, I think I, I, that was when I was testing to try to figure out how to get promises working. I don't think I need that anymore, but just in case it gets some sort of exception uh, that I don't catch for, it will automatically fail and I can then you know, kind of break my head trying to figure out what the heck's going on. But anyway, so the idea here is that once it gets to this then down here, it will automatically have two values, that Boolean or that string, and I'm just testing to make sure it's true. If it is true, therefore everything's okay. If it is not true, then it's going to be false. And I just realized there's a particular error. Well, no, this, this, this works okay. Okay, anyway, so to recap, we have to turn it into a Cypress promise. Once we turn it into a Cypress promise, it does thens, but it doesn't do a catch. So we do our then catch within the then section of the Cypress promise, and we return a promise itself. So we will always resolve, and we will either resolve with a string, or, or resolve with a true in this case, or resolve with the string, and that kind of help us indicate whether we're going to have, we have the actual truth that's occurred there, the actual, uh, a lock card has been captured correctly or we got some sort of type error. So if, we, if it fails, it's going to fail that we got some sort of type error or whatever in that particular case. So that's basically what that looks like. So that's what should lock card. We should throw an exception with the player is human and no card is selected during the timeout. Okay, so basically uh, Cypress will timeout automatically within 4,000 milliseconds. Now in the game, I want, to, I want to give a person 30 seconds to be able to make a selection on the card. So obviously, it's, I don't want to sit there and have all of these run for 30 seconds. This, this test just suddenly stall for 30 seconds. So I have, uh, within the default for the player, I'm going to set the timeout to be 3,000 milliseconds, basically three seconds. When we do the application, the application is going to change it to 30 seconds, but by default, I'm going to have the players three seconds. That way, we're only delaying Cypress by four seconds or three seconds at the very most here. But the idea here is that we're going to get the lock card, and then if we get, um, and first of all, let me back up here. We're going to set the player as human, and that basically means that if we go back over here, it's going to be human. It's automatically going to do a rejection here. In my particular case, I'm going to make sure that it's going to, I want to make sure it, it does a timeout, a specific, you know, it does some sort of timeout. We don't have that code written yet. 
So anyway, by just setting that to human, I'm going to resolve this to be true. Otherwise, I'm going to resolve this to be the error.name, which is the exact same thing we did in the one previous here. But now what we're looking at here is, is I expect that the result to equal to the string error, which means that, hey, I got a timeout error. If this was true, then everything was OK. But, you know, then, then it passed and that's incorrect. So I'm expecting it to say error. So that takes care of that. It should record the lockout card when the player is human and the card is selected within the timeout. So this was a little bit more tricky. Exact same thing as we did before in the earlier one, in case we set the human being to be true. But once we set the human being to be true, what we're going to do is that we're going to, again, wrap it. We're going to return our own promise here. But what we're going to do is that we know that the player has an automatic timeout of 30 millis uh, excuse me, 3,000 milliseconds. So after 1,000 milliseconds, we're going, to, we're going to run a method called set lock card, which is something we're going to add on to player here, which is going to change the lock card into the card that we've defined here, that we've automatic, that we automatically added in at line 54. By doing that, we should be able to satisfy within that 3,000 milliseconds that the lock card has changed. So if the lock card has changed, we should be able to resolve true. We're going, to, we're going to bind it. Either we're going to resolve true or we're going to resolve that some sort of error still occurred within the 3,000 milliseconds. And so we expect it to be true. If it comes up true, therefore that means that we got that locked card within the timeout. Just like up here at line 6, we resolve true because we immediately got the lock card with an AI. Of course, we immediately always get it because it's always there, you know, because the AI is, is immediate. There's no there's no timeout. So the key here is, is that this is the exact same code as we did up here in line 30. But the key, the difference is, is I've got a little set timeout that after a thousand milliseconds, I change that set of locked card by play, calling the set locked card method, which is a method we're going to have to create and write some specs for here in just a minute. OK. Uh, I should throw an exception if attempting to change the lock card. This is this is real simple. You know, hey, I can't change the lock card. I can read it, but I can't change it. We should be able to remove the lock card. So this is now going to also have a uh, method called removed lock card. So we should be able to take the lock card out of the out of the lock card, the lock card out, and return it back over to us. So that's no big deal there. And we should be able to make sure the lock card is null and that the old lock card is equal to true because lock card is going to re is going to uh, return the old lock card. And finally, we should return null if no lock if there's no lock card to remove. So if we're doing the remove lock card, it should return null. Whew. That's a big one. Yeah. So that's how the lock card uh, particularly lurks here. So we got two new routines right here. We have the set lock card uh, let me back up here. We have the set lock card and we have the removed lock card. So we're going to need specifications for both of those. So let's go ahead and do the set lock card next. That will be set locked card dot spec. And this is actually very simple. Uh, it should throw an exception if the card is not an instance of the card. Because set lock card is going to pass a card. So we first of all make sure, hey, when we set the card, uh, is it an instance of the card? or not. So that's basically all that does. And it should throw an exception if the card is not inside the deck. Let me just let's actually let's close that. There we go. So a little space there. Make it a little easier to read. Should throw an exception if the card is not inside the deck. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is that if we have a card here that is not inside the deck, and as you can see that we've changed the values here. Uh, we have a card here as a value of two, and then we also we're inserting card that has a value of one. So if the cards are not part of the deck, then we also want to throw an exception because we don't want to put a we don't want to set a lock card that's not inside the deck. And then finally, we should be able to actually set the lock card. Yeah, no biggie. That was real simple. So finally, we got that remove lock card. I think it was called remove lock card. Yeah, remove lock card. That's going to be our next spec. So let's type in remove. Let's spell it right. Move locked card dot spec. Let's copy the code in. Okay, and here is our code. It's extraordinarily simple. First of all, it should be able to remove the lock card. Now, a lot more here than, than is expected because if we take a fact, if we take a look at the lock card spec, when we're calling the remove lock card, we're expecting it to be within a promise. So this is going to be a promise. So since it's a promise, we're going to have Cypress write that as a null, and then we're going to put our information within a then. We're going to do it then. We're going to uh, resolve uh, the. We're going to resolve the promise if the player. Once we do the player lock card, then 
we're going to get that from Cyp uh, Cyprus and Cyprus we're going to be able to just do a quick check to make sure if our removed card is equal to the card and the same thing here if, if there is no lock card because notice we, we set the lock card here but we're not setting it down here so therefore once we remove the lock card it should be equal to null and that's pretty much it on the removed lock card so that should take care of all of our tests. Now let's uh, let's actually run the test and see what happens. Of course, a lot some of them still will work because we did have already a little bit of a player class in there, but I, the lock card stuff is going to blow up a lower place. So right now it's a lot of make sure I didn't you know type in something stupid or anything like that. So let's do the uh, run npm run test e2e ci, and I'll catch you on the other side. Okay, we're all done and we've got nine errors and surprisingly all within the lock card, remove lock card and set lock card specs. Now I know for a fact, uh, Beck, we could check this on the remove lock card and uh, specs and you know, on the on remove lock card and skip lock card, it's just gonna blow up because there's not even a routine there. Uh, you, know, let, you know, set lock card is not a function. So uh, that's kind of the errors that we expected. That looks like that's all for the test for the player. And that, should, that will complete all the tests we're going to use for the player. So the next video is cool. we're going to take a look at all of the code to be able to make sure that the tests work correctly. If you like this video, please click on the like button below, subscribe to this channel, or you know, leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. And thanks again for watching this video. This is the Virtual White, AKA Mike Smith, and we'll see you later.